for joining the March 7th, 2019 Volta call. Our main topic today is looking at V.2 release planning and Sprint 15 planning in particular. And uh, we do record the meetings and post them to YouTube, so please keep that in mind during all of the discussions and any presentations should we have any today. And with that, I think we'll go ahead and get started. We didn't have time to get to this on Tuesday's call, so we're following up today on that. And one of the main topics here, and it's related to the brigades going on for one, is uh, for some of the main scope items we have for 2.0. So we got an update today from Sarov on the Tech Profile Brigade, and it looks like that is almost code complete, and we're targeting a demo by mid-March. And then on the adapter containerization, I'm not sure if we have a sense uh, from the brigade work going on there, when we'll have a, a working version to use with the core for the Python-based OLT adapter and the uh, the Go-based adapter. Is it too early to estimate that? Do we have a ballpark idea? I've got a ballpark. Um, okay. So, so at least for the Python, you know, OLT and ONU, we're just now to the point where we have a decent child device relationship and we're about to start proxying OMCI. As you've just heard, we're not to the point yet where we can do any flow work, um, both because the flow class is going to have to be refactored a bit to deal with decomposition, but also because logical devices and ports need to be sorted out, um, which is something Aaron's working on as well. So given that and given the OMCI stuff starting to work, I'm thinking some of these are starting to look like, you know, eights and thirteens in terms of story points, which may mean more stories are needed. Uh, given that, I'm, you know, thinking six to eight weeks probably. There's going to be some uh, refactoring and some testing needed to see all this stuff uh, play out. So it might be um, a little bit later. Is it six to eight weeks? Correct. Is that what I heard? So that's, that's roughly correct. usually two, two ballpark or three sprints for us. Okay. And then, uh, Amit, do we have you on the bridge? Let's see. Oh, I don't see Amit. I have to follow up on that. Uh, I know we have some of the folks on this bridge who are working on the Go-based uh, OLT adapter as well. Do we have anyone on the call who can speak to uh, any sort of estimate for how much more time we think is required to get that first version of it going, which we understand will not be at feature parity with the Python-based adapter? Okay, I don't think we have anyone on the bridge who can talk to that today. Okay, then let me go to a different screen and let's take a look at our roadmap that we've laid out and maybe touch base on, on where we are with the schedule, what we need to do in terms of release planning, um, if we need to make any adjustments at this time or if we need to hold off on those discussions till the lockdown as well. Because our current sprint is supposed to end just before we go to the face-to-face -face lockdown. So we could uh, just plant the seed for some of the discussions here and make final decisions there, but I do want to make sure we come out at least of the face-to-face -face meeting with a solid plan for, uh, or for our next few weeks after that, because uh, we were planning to cut the release at the end of Sprint 15, but we were expecting 2.0 to have uh, functional containerized adapters with the restructured core. The tech profile work is almost done. A couple other items were in here somewhere at risk, so I think those aren't, aren't blocking items for releasing 2.0. But uh, I think the three we'd identified as the must-haves that were going to drive a lot of the schedule at this point were the, and this should probably be updated because we had um, we have both the Python-based and the Go-based at this point. And as long as we have one functional, I think we have something that we can use for other testing and things as well. Uh, mm -hmm. The Broadcom, the containerization of the Open ONU adapter, and then the tech profile work. So, uh, and then we also you see who we've got on. Ken, I know you're on from CNN. I'm not sure. Let's see who else we've got. Yes, I'm here. Uh, 
in terms of the performance testing and scalability testing, do we have a sense for for how that's proceeding from your team? Well, I, I'll say well, this, this one has to wait. Oh, this is a simulated OLT. Sorry, Ken. Yeah, that's simulated OLT, uh, but it's still it's uh it's it's moving forward. But uh, since we are we are in um, operating in the cluster mode and uh, we are working with uh, not just one core but multiple core, and uh, we are we are handling like we are facing some hard problems <laughs> because we have some calls that are like in active active mode and changing data at the same time so we are uh we're we're facing a lot of concurrency uh, uh, uh situation where data are being changed by different calls at the same time so those are those are it's taking us a little bit longer uh, to sort out those, those issues because we need to sort out those issues first uh before we can uh, really run uh, those performance tests. Uh, we have run them with single, uh, single cores, and that's no no issues there. It's it's, it's pretty yeah. good. Uh, but okay. uh, when when we put them in core, active active, that's when it's uh, uh, we have issues that we have to deal with. Okay. For the investigation you guys are doing on that work, do you have a, a ballpark idea of how much longer you expect you'll need for? We're working on those issues. Um, I've, I've, it's hard to it's hard, to, it's hard to, it's hard to say because it's like uh, we thought we had it, <laughs> and then uh, and then we find another scenario where it's something else uh, pop up. So it's um, okay. It's, it's it's hard to say. Okay. So so so, so, so Ken uh, so Ken on the uh, how. And you know, you say the the multiple cores trying to update in the same value. Let, let me summarize it that way. Okay. I mean, how how confident are you guys? Feel like you can resolve it in what time frame? I think we will resolve it. It just a, it's just a question of 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 really uh, getting to the bottom of it because it's a combination of etcd uh, and, and the model itself uh, in the core, uh, where there are some locks in etcd that is appears is not working the way it's supposed to be working. So it's uh, it's, it's we have to investigate both the, the code in the core and and etcd as well. Is, is that something you are you, the, you're actually relying on the etcd community to resolve or? <coughs> No, we're we're handling it uh, ourselves uh, for now because uh, we want to make sure that uh, at least the code in the model is is uh, is, is solid and that it does not uh, have uh, uh, that it's not the one that is the culprit because we're seeing some locks in etcd that that seems odd but we're not hundred percent sure whether it's because of uh, some code that is in the core that is incorrect. So until until we get to that point, uh, we won't uh, go to HCD for for a problem that may be easy in, in in the model. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, then let me go back to our roadmap. Any other? Questions on on uh, for Ken before we move back to the roadmap. And back, and you know, not, not for Ken, and then you know, okay. and and uh, Matt, you, you are very focused on the Python open OT containerization, right? So, um, I think the the open O the 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 ONU adapter also under your 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 lead on that one. So so. Is, is that something happening in parallel, or 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 yeah. we have to get open? No, it's happening in parallel. Yeah. That's the thing is, you know, again, I can't proxy OMCI messages until I have an OLT do it for me. So the code right now will run a containerized process. It won't do anything, but it'll run. I need an OLT mm -hmm. to proxy the OMCI with. The Go one comes along in two weeks, then we'll all start using that right away. In the meantime. 
whatever one comes along first to facilitate getting the ONU working is the biggest priority. Okay. So, yeah, but the ONU is, is part of, of, certainly part of this, and it's part of actually where we're at right now, where we're to the point where the open OLT adapter is making the adapter proxy call, adapter adapter call to say, start up your OMCI state machine, which will lead right into proxying OMCI. So we're right there at it. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just now to the point where we can really start digging into it. Okay, great, thanks. So Ken, what uh, back to you? Uh, is is it possible to log every issues on the Jira so people is aware about what's happening on that? Um, you, you said the XED, the data, the KV store locked up, and you know things like that. Is that possible? You, I, I think there are some uh, some Jira for that, but if it's not there, I will. Uh, uh, if it's there and it's not uh, clear, we'll update it. If it's not there, we'll just create one. Yeah, let's make it more transparent here. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Other question? Okay, so uh, when we first added sprints 13 to 15, we were, uh, we'd estimated that we'd be able to complete this work in that time. <laughs> I think what we've heard on on various fronts is that we do need additional time to complete the containerization work for the adapters and some of the other work as well. And so looking at this roadmap that we have right now, so this is the one that's currently on the uh, wiki as well. So we have the, the planned target is for the end of sprint 15, which to me does not re look realistic, but I'd like to get views from the group as well. Um, is this a discussion we can have now or do we need to defer it to the lockdown? <clears throat> uh, uh, Julie, can you say that again? You, are you talking about so, the other issue? Yeah, in terms, in terms of, of reassessing our timeline, right. because we plan to cut to 2.0 at the end of sprint 15. But at the end of sprint 15, I don't suspect that we're going no. to have the containerized adapters up and, and ready at that time. If I'm wrong, that's great. But it sounds like there's also perhaps some additional work uh, on the core side that, that may or may not be resolved in that time as well. So I'm looking, I'm trying to assess if we have a realistic time frame reflected. And if there's anything we need to look at for preliminary planning now, if like on the containerization side, I think Matt said he expected probably six to eight more weeks, which would be a you know, minimum two more sprints. And so if we need two more sprints, then uh, you know, we had, I think, three sprints plus a hardening sprint planned for 2.1 to bring us to the end of June. Is there a point in here where we need to decide whether Volta 2.0 gets extended before we cut it uh, by a couple more sprints? Or do we end up collapsing everything into a 2.0, pulling in some of the function from 2.1? And I don't know if we have enough resources to do that either. That, I think, is a discussion more for the lockdown, because we haven't tried to find uh, technical leads for the 2.1 scope items at this point. But I'm looking at our looming target date for 2.0 and not thinking that's achievable. So I wanted to just cue that up for discussion with the group. Mike, do you want to say something? No, sorry. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just uh, Julie, I, don't I think, think we have everybody here that we we need yeah. to discuss. Or I okay. think we need to admit um, as well. Maybe right. a separate, specific okay. meeting on that. Okay, that's fine. And if we need to defer it to the the lockdown, we can as well. Yeah, you know, at least at the end of Sprint 15, probably our last meeting before the lockdown, we can talk about it as well. See if we're at a point where we're comfortable uh, releasing 2.0, but uh, but at, at this point, I think our schedule is at risk. So, okay. So that I was agree, yes. really, really my main topic for today was looking at the, the current roadmap, the current scope we have in and trying to get a realistic view of when 
we'll have our 2.0 ready to cut. So I think probably I don't have a lot more. Let me go back. Um, I don't think there's anything else we need to talk about on this slide. Oh, maybe, let's see. Uh, Sean, Sean Missette, I know you're on there. Let me see if Sarov, I don't see Sarov on. We could talk about one item we had here uh, related to the uh, multiple TCON support. So we had a view when we were doing the planning for sprints 13 to 15 that once the tech profile work was completed, then we could reassess what it would take to support the multiple TCONs and, and try and figure out a timeline based on resources available at that point. Is the, since the tech profile work is nearing code completion, are we at a point yet where we can have that discussion to try and determine how many sprints would be needed to do the multiple TCON? Work, or is it uh, yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to have a, a discussion uh, um, on Redis' side about that uh, probably next okay. week, uh, so the week after maybe I can um, report back on that. Okay. That or maybe maybe good. next Thursday, it depends. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Sean. All right. Let me go back to our main topic here for today. So I think probably I'll be giving you some time back today, but I will open things up for discussion. So I think where we are, we've got our Sprint 5 planning. Uh, we'll probably go take a quick look at that on the stories that are in there right now, since we didn't have a chance to do that Tuesday. And then we have some high level estimates for some of the work that remains to be done that's in 2.0 scope. And then uh, hopefully targeting a demo in the next week or two on the tech profile work. And then that will bring us up to uh, the time for our lockdown. So let me go, any questions on kind of the high level we have here? Okay, then let me go back to our board. And a number of these items were ones that had uh, carried over from Sprint 14 into Sprint 15. Uh, when Sean and I were, Sean, Sean Ying and I were looking at the backlog, we also did take a number of items that were in the backlog but were being actively worked and were in progress, some of them with, of them with code out there. We did pull those in as well since they were being actively worked. And other than that, we have not pulled in any new stories as far as I'm aware. It's just looking at the ones that were in progress and mapping those in so that we could track them as part of the sprint. So this is a continuation of the stories that were in there previously, plus the addition we've had over the last few weeks with new JIRA issues that have come in that have been mapped over for defect fixes and the continued development of the stories for the adapter work. So that's really what we have for the Sprint 15 scope. So it's mostly unchanged from Sprint 14, just a carryover. Do we have any questions from the group? Okay, I'm not hearing any. Uh, Sean Ying, do you have any other items you want to talk about related to the release planning or the Sprint 15 planning? Um, no, I think that I'll reach out to other service providers and see whether they have any, for example, like uh, the inbound management, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, yes. I would, I'll try to align those with them again. Uh, okay. I believe they are work around in the big, in the uh, near term. So potentially, I, as I said, you know, whatever listed in the 2.0 and the 2.1 uh, probably need to trim down. Okay. And we did, you know, when we did the sprint 13 through 15 planning, we did have the in-band management and multiple TCON were at risk, no resources assigned to them at that time to pick up the work, plus the dependencies for both. But I think in light of some of the continued work we're expecting after Sprint 15, then I think you're right that we need to take a look at 2.1 again. And this will need to have a, an agreement, I think, by the end of the lockdown and nail down what our 
our updated roadmap and target scope is because I believe there may be, uh, like you said, you could take it back to the service providers for some further discussion and prioritization review. And then we'll see what we can come up with by the lockdown and nail things down and look for, for technical leads for agreed scope items at that point. Okay, any other questions from the group? All right, um, Matt, I may have one more question for you. So I think at this point we had the containerization brigade plan to continue through, um, I think we have them scheduled through the, up until the lockdown. I'm thinking perhaps we need to extend them beyond as well, or do you? Yes, yes until it's done. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Over. So I, th I think we're still okay using the, half hour time slot of um, the the first part of what used to be our Volta call. I think that still is okay. Um, as we get some more demos that make it a little bit tight, we may have to rethink that, but I think we're okay for probably at least another month with that. So I'll I'm try fine. and update. Go ahead. I'm, I'm good either way. If we need to move it, we move it. If not, that's fine too. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I Until we run into a conflict, I think we'll keep it this way. So I'll just give a, a heads up to folks and I'll make some adjustments on the cord calendar to reflect that as well so that we can keep those going. And again, for the folks on the brigade, since I've had some issues with those updates getting accepted properly sometimes on the cord calendar, you may be getting multiple um, meeting notices. So apologies in advance, but I'll try and do it as cleanly as I can. All right, any other topics for discussion with the group today? Okay, then let me go back here. I think that's it for today. And then we'll try and sync up hopefully before the lockdown with that demo. And I'll, I'll try and touch base with Saurav later to see if he has a, a time slot that he's going to target for that. And with that, I'll give you a half hour back and talk to most of you on next, Thursday, next Tuesday. Thanks everyone. Thank you.